Welcome to the Uncle Jim Effect podcast. My name is Dennis Deloach, and I'm going to be your host. Uh, first of all, I just want to say how grateful I am. We have had such tremendous response to this podcast. It's kind of blown me away. I think our first three videos currently, as of a little bit ago, are almost at 8,000 views, and, and uh, that that is just so exciting to me. So let's get started. Uh, I'm really excited about this this uh, podcast. I think that it as we're talking about uh, realizing our God-given potential and how do we work together to magnify that, to really create the abundant life that we're looking for, this really is where the rubber meets the road. What we're going to talk about today is the eight steps to achieve monumental goals. And I use that word mon monumental specifically. Uh, that is a big word. We're not just talking about goals where we write them down on paper. These are goals that kind of scare us. Uh, and the definition of monumental is something that's uh, of great importance, of great extent, or great size. And so when we think of something worthy of a monument, uh, that's something that's been accomplished that people think enough of that they create an everlasting uh, visual of what that, that monument represented. So let's start. And uh, these are eight steps that uh, have benefited me in my life and that... Uh, have brought tremendous success and joy and abundance to me. And uh, I want to share that with you. So first, uh, the first step is we need to define the purpose. And it sounds simple, but if we don't have a purpose, you don't have a, a monumental goal. I want to share with you the purpose we have uh, in this podcast, what I'm doing. And my purpose is to help a million people realize and magnify their God-given potential. And to me, if you told me I could have the effect uh, of two people, five people, 10 people, that, that's a tough thing. I, I don't take that for granted. But for me, a monumental goal is that I want to impact a million people and help them realize their God-given potential and to magnify that. And if I can do that, uh, that's something that I think will act absolutely be monumental and significant. Uh, I just finished a book that uh, was written by Dr. Benjamin Hardy, and it's called 10X is easier than 2X. I would highly recommend you get that book. Uh, I would love to get him on the podcast. I'm kind of working behind the scenes to do that. But that book basically states that it is easier to set a goal 10 times bigger than you originally thought you could than it is to just try to double that goal. And uh, the short version or cliff notes of that book basically say that if we simply think we just want to grow by 10%, 20% or double that, we think that we need to double our work effort, uh, put in twice as much time, and read another book. And uh, that then puts us head to head competing against other people. Where when we think about 10xing a goal, for example, like I've done with this podcast, it made me think way outside of what I thought. And so I thought, I can't do that. I've got to bring on other other people and other resources. I've got to think outside the box. And, and so I really encourage you to read that book. Also, uh, there was a quote that uh, Dan Kennedy said. He's a famous uh, marketer, probably one of the best marketers that ever lived. And he said, nothing happens until after you commit. When you set a purpose that big in your life, whatever that goal is, when you set a purpose that big and that monumental and commit to it, that's when things start happening. When you're just thinking about it, I might do it, or that's kind of scary, nothing's going to happen. So the second one uh, is to set monumental goals, and we just talked about that. So we defined what a monumental goal was, but whatever that goal or area we're talking about in life that you want to create abundance, whether it's your health, your finances, your relationships, whatever it might be, really think outside the box. Uh, Andrew Carnegie has such a cool quote that when we dissected, it really kind of defined this in a nutshell. And he said, if you want to be happy, set a goal that commands your thoughts, liberates your energies, and inspires your hopes. So let's talk about those three things. So if we set a goal that commands our thoughts, what does that mean? To me, that means that if I've got a goal, when, during the day when I'm thinking about, if I, I thought about, if I had set my goal to impact five people, that wouldn't take a lot of time, really. When I 
set that goal to impact a million people, you you can better believe it's occupying my thoughts because to honor my word, how do I do that? And so I like that. And it says to liberate your energy. And boy, you can imagine that I'm finding sources of energies that I'm going to need that I've never had before to reach a goal that's so monumental. And so I really like that concept. And then finally, that it inspires your hopes. And that really has opened new doors to me, uh, sources of hope, where I feel now that I'm getting some help from uh, other sources that are saying that's a that's a worthy goal and we're going to help you with that. So again, the second step is to set monumental goals. The third step is to focus daily on what the Cubbies and their leadership group call lead indicators. You know, lead indicator is just simply something that instead of looking back on the month and say, you know, what did I do? How many people did I impact? It's looking forward saying, if I want to impact a million people, what do I have to do every day, every hour? Because it's if I say I want to lose 100 pounds, then that's difficult. And I, let me share that story with you. Uh, speaking of that, I mentioned in the first podcast that uh, uh, at one point uh, where I'm at now, I've lost over 120 pounds. And if I would have set out and said, you know what, I'm going to lose 120 pounds, that is such a massive goal that there's no way in the world I could have done that. But when I say today, I want to get up and walk two miles and I want to eat 2,000 calories and I want to limit my sugar intake, but that's all I want to work. I just want to do that today. And if I can do that, that's my lead indicator because if I put together seven days of that for a week or 30 days of that or 90 days in a quarter or 365 days in the year of doing those lead indicators one at a time, Absolutely, I'll hit that goal. But if every day I'm like, I've got to lose 120 pounds, it's going to be frustrating and, and defeat the purpose. So that is being able to focus on the lead indicators. So the fourth thing that's so important is to be intentional. Now, our last Friday, I started something I call Friday Focus. It's a little short video that I hope you take the time to look at. And that video will simply focus on one aspect or one tool or one principle that will help you in life that's helped me. And it's just a short little video. It doesn't take but a few minutes. And we spend a lot of time on how to be intentional. Suffice it to say that when you're intentional, the activities you do during the day and your calendar of what you plan to do reflect what your purpose is. Okay, so let's move on. Number five. And this is probably the most overlooked tool that we have, and that's to use mentors and coaches. I love the concept of mentors and coaches. Uh, if you think, or let me back up, if you're trying to accomplish a goal that you have not accomplished yet, and you think you're going to be able to do that, with the same tools you use that didn't get you there, you're, you're sadly mistaken. So many people that are successful in the area you're looking to work in would love to help you or give you one insight that might change your life. Uh, again, as I've mentioned before, I've uh, had the opportunity to be coached by tremendous people all the way up through uh, when I played college at Utah State University. Uh, I was coached by uh, uh, Chris Pella, who was my linebacker's coach. In fact, I still... Uh, have the luxury and honor of being able to call him friend and to visit with him on a regular basis. He attended my youngest son's wedding uh, this past summer. He's uh, over 80 years old and is suffering from Parkinson's disease, but I still call him coach. And, uh, he means the world to me, and I still learn from him almost uh, on a daily basis, reflecting back to what he taught me. In business, I've had some tremendous mentors because I wasn't that smart in business. I've made so many mistakes, but as I've sought out people much wiser than me, it's shortened that learning curve down because that's all a coach does or a consultant is to take that learning curve that I can learn on my own, but to take it from a year or two and heartache and thousands of dollars of mistakes and lost revenue, shorten it down and to be able to utilize those concepts they have that know that they know work and to really shorten the distance. To success. So number six, and this is the one that I think 
is the one that most people have the biggest problem with, and yet the most successful people do this all the time, and this is visualization. I want to share a story with you about visualization that uh, really taught me the power of this, because I was not a believer in this. And again, this goes back to my college days. The beginning of my sophomore year in college, uh, coach came to me uh, after a game in the beginning of the year and said, I think you're playing very well. We're going to let you start this next game. And it happened to be against Arizona State University. And uh, as I did my research, that was on a Sunday, and we were playing in the next Saturday. As I did my research, the guy that I was going to be going head-to-head -head against was uh, a returning honorable mention All-American. It was a predicted early round draft pick for the NFL draft. He was a big fellow at number 53. I do not remember his name, but I vividly remember exactly what he looks like in the uniform. I vividly remember his stance. And I vividly remember the gait he had when he walked. And so during that week, I thought, you know, I'm really, I got to visualize this because I, I, I knew that I was out of my league from a talent standpoint. And so every night after practice, I would go into my room and sit there and I would literally visualize me having success, being in my stance, knowing the plays they run and the steps he was taking, that I would see myself controlling him, shedding the block and attacking the ball carrier. And I just saw that over and over and over in my mind. And uh, I remember lining up when the game came. It was on regional TV back then. They used to have one game of the week in regionally televised national games. Uh, long story short, not to bore you with old war stories, but uh, I had a tremendous game, and I was uh, selected the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the game. Uh, I still have a plaque on my office wall right right over there that uh, signifies that. But it, all of that came from visu visualization. I saw in my mind the success I was having before it happened, and it blew me away at how my mind and body reacted because I had been there before. Uh, a quote that really helped me a lot, and it was said by Albert Einstein, is imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attraction. And isn't that true? If we can mentally think exactly what we want, we have to think and visualize the outcome along with the feelings, along with the emotions we're going to have. If we can truly do that, I promise you, because I've seen it in my life, I mentioned the physical aspect from sports. I've done that in business. I've done that in income. Uh, it absolutely works. It's not voodoo. It's actually science. And the real process behind that is powerful. And I encourage you to, to do more research. And we'll talk about that more in depth later. The seventh thing is we need to keep score. I was told early on by a mentor Three types of people in life, those that are winning, those that are losing, and those that don't know the score. So which one of those are you? It's okay if you're losing as long as you make adjustments. And it's okay if you're winning as long as you make adjustments to make sure you stay winning. But when you don't know the score, you don't know the score. So we need to always know the score. Probably one of the most brilliant business minds of all time is a man by the name of Peter Drucker. And he was kind of the modern guru of business uh, from decades ago. But he he made this quote. It's very, very famous in the business world. He says, you can't improve what you don't measure. So if you're not measuring or keeping score on whatever it is we're talking about, whether it's weight gain, whether it's savings accounts, whether it's value of your business, whether it's your monthly revenue, whether it's your sales calls, whether it's anything in this life, if you can't measure it, it's not a goal that you can really track to get improvement. on. So sometimes this takes a lot of thought because we can't say, I want to be happier or I want to be in better shape. What does that mean? We have to quantify it. We have to have a number that we can measure daily, weekly, monthly, because then we can look back and say, yes, I've had success. No, I haven't. And finally, this is the one that I was the worst at, and I think probably most of you would agree you might not be so good at, is we need to celebrate milestones and achievements along the path. Again, the journey is 
the thing that we're supposed to enjoy, the destination or reaching that monumental goal in and of itself is phenomenal, but it's that journey along the way that really creates abundance in our life. And so we need to set little goals. We need to celebrate those along the way. And we need to focus on our personal progress and our growth. Might set a goal to lose 100 pounds and I fall way short and only lose 50. Not too bad. We can still focus on our personal progress and growth, but we need to celebrate along the way on these goals. So again, let me review real quick. The eight steps to achieving monumental goals. One is you got to define your purpose, right? We got to know exactly what it is. It's got to be defined. It's got to be exact. And it's got to be passionate for me that every day when I wake up, that's what I'm driven to do. Number two, we got to set monumental goals. And monumental goals are ones that scare you. If they don't scare you, it's not big enough. We have to focus, number three, on lead indicators for those daily activities. If that's all we focus on, what do I do today? I don't look at the end goal down the road. What do I do today? And then I, every week or every month, I look up and say, okay, I did it. But I got to get back to doing my daily lead indicators. Number four, be intentional in everything you do. Again, we had the last Friday focus video went all through that, and that's all we talked about. Basically, that means that the words that come out of my mouth that I say are important. If my actions and schedule and calendar don't reflect those things that are important to me, it's not important. The fifth thing is to have mentors and coaches guide you along the way. It is amazing how many times in my life that I've thought, you know, I've done this forever and ever and ever, and I have someone come in within minutes. They see something that I've been missing, and I just can't state that's probably the most underutilized tool uh, with those of us that are trying to do this because most of us are embarrassed to ask people that are successful, or most of us think they won't want to help me, or I don't want people to know I'm not that smart, and that's okay. Those that have the most success realize the more you learn, the more you know you don't know. The sixth thing, we talked about how critical visualization is. That is absolutely critical on a daily basis. It is so powerful. Trust me. Learn more about that. We're going to spend some time on that. Keep score. That's number seven. Are you winning? Are you losing? Or if you don't know the score, that's okay. We got to get a scoreboard going so you know the score. Finally, celebrate the milestones along the way. Again, I am blown away at the... Um, the feedback I've got from family and friends, and I'm just so encouraged. I uh, am committed to doing this. This is a monumental goal for me. I I feel driven to get this done and to really work and to help people. If you're listening to this and you have any doubt that you have God-given potential, trust me and rely on the faith I have that I know that's true. And just because you don't know it yet doesn't mean God doesn't have tremendous plans or potential for you. We're going to work together. We're going to be able to identify what that is for you specifically. And then how do you magnify that God-given potential to benefit you and your family and those that God wants you to serve? Uh, a couple of housekeeping items. I mentioned the Friday Focus videos. Those come out on Friday, kind of short, probably five, six, eight minutes specifically drilling down on a very important principle that's benefited me in my life, both personally and professionally. Please, if you would, take a second just to hit the subscribe button and the like and to leave a comment. Uh, also, if you would please share with me stories, personal stories, successes, questions, anything at all that you can that would help benefit me and those that we serve, please go to the Loach Podcast, that's D-E-L-O-A-C-H, podcast at gmail.com and leave the story. Uh, and I would love to hear from you to be able to do that. And, and then third, please share this with your friends and family. If we truly want to reach a million people and if we truly want to help everyone realize their God-given potential and how to magnify it to benefit all of those around us, and if we want to create a tsunami of hope, we need to get people on board. And I'm not ashamed to say, let's get them here because it just might be your Uncle Jim moment. In your mind, when you're thinking that name that keeps popping, I bet she would love that or I bet he would like this. 
reach out to them. That might just be uh, the thing that they needed or an answer to their prayer. And then finally, get going, getting busy, and let's get after it and make it a great week. And uh, I'll see you in a few days. What a great time of year. We're uh, coming up upon Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll talk about that Friday. I promise you Friday will be a video you do not want to miss. Thank you, uh, and get busy. Have success. Bye-bye.